Hey guys, sorry about that, that I had to uh, make it into uh, this video. It was real long, 37 minutes, so I decided to just make a real short one. I guess it'll be a second part to this. Just, uh, I'm glad you found it. And um, on the close-up of the scale or the balance that I purchased, the uh, AND FX120i. And this is the setup that I have here right now on my bench, uh, on my reloading bench, just weighing out some um what is this here 30 calibers 308 diameter 125 grain hollow point bullets these are supposed to be really good also for the 300 blackout so these are the cases for the 762 by 39 custom bolt rifle these are lapua let's see if we get some good lapua cases um, let me tell you, a lot of people talk about, and this is something that I have, I have addressed on other videos that, you know, the 762 by 39 is not a very accurate round, but out of this round, they developed the, forgot which one it was, the something Russian and another one that, um, there's, there's extremely accurate for bench rest. Now, yes, if you're shooting these, uh, rounds, the 762 by 39 out of an SKS, an AK-47, stuff like that. You know, the bullet, it tends to be 310, 311, um, the board of, of the gun. Uh, it's just not, I mean, yeah, you know, but you can get these rounds. I get like about half inch groups at 100. I mean, I've seen, you guys can see the videos on this rifle that I have and the groups that I get. Uh, when I make the uh, the new video on how the rifle looks now, I will show the, some of the targets that I've shot, shot and the groups that I've gotten. Um, again, I have custom dies that I've made for this one, at least the seating die. I got the Hornady uh, seating dies for this caliber. And I did a, a full supporting uh, sleeve of the case. You guys can look up that video too. Uh, but this this round is extremely accurate. It's got no recoil the throat erosion of your barrel where the rifling start being that is it, it has very little uh, You know powder capacity and the mouth of the uh, actual neck. It's 308 Because that's what I did. I'm shooting this round, but I'm reloading this round instead of with a 310 311 bullets I'm using 308 bullets because my barrel is a 762 by 39 uh, Schillen match barrel. I got the barrel from Schillen in, you know, 308 board. And then I went to, uh, um, I think it's PTG and I bought a, a Finnish Reamer in 7.62 by 39. But instead of having this, this is where it comes, this is where you get the accuracy. You cannot get that Reamer or have your barrel chamber with a 310, 311 board. They'll make it to you go to PTG. They make a uh, you know go gauge and no go gauge chamber gauges. They make a lot of stuff, um, and they can they did that ream especially for me. And I only pay like one hundred and twenty dollars. Uh, and you can do multiple chambers with a finished reamer. And if anything, the only thing you gotta do is send it back to them, or they'll sharpen it, and you can keep going. And that reamer it was done in seven point six two by thirty nine with a three oh eight throat. Why? Because I told them I want to reload the 762 by 39 uh, but with a 308 bullet because my rifling is 308 and that's where this whole game changes on this caliber of people bag mouthing it. Okay, this caliber, if you do a custom bolt action rifle, is a lot of fun, very minimal recoil. It's like having the 300 blackout. Remington has the uh, 700 SPS uh, tactical in 300 blackout. They have it in 308, 223, and it's the same thing. Okay, but um, uh, this is where the game changes. Okay, if you do this caliber 7.62 by 39, okay, you have to make sure when you chamber your barrel that you get that the reamer it ends up being with a 308 uh, throat on it. So you can get the most accuracy out of your 308 match bullets. So, um, you know, so that's what I've been doing and it's been great. Okay, guys, going so going back to the scale. This is the scale right here. 
the A and D FX 120i. And the way I have it set up, if you could see, I went to Home Depot and I purchased a nice tile, you know, regular smooth tile. Okay. Um, here I got my scale, my weights. And then uh, I went ahead and I put it underneath. You see the little felt pads right there in the corners. I put the uh, four little fe felt uh, pads to absorb some of the vibration from my table. And then I put a computer mouse pad. And that, it's, it, I mean, it is solid. This thing is solid. So it doesn't move. Um, I bought the uh, the windbreak for it. It's designated for this scale. Okay, it doesn't come with this one. It comes with a short one that I haven't even taken out of the package. See, I just moved it, and, 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 and you saw how it changed from 0 0.00 to 0 0.02, because I, I went kind of like fast on it. And maybe, again, I guess, I guess the radio... Uh, magnetic thing from the field from the phone. I don't know how this goes when people reload for it. So this is the scale and down here I have the trusty Gem Pro 250. Guys, this scale, if they were to get this scale, the Gem Pro 250, and make it this size, imagine this this scale right there, just like you see it, just like you see it, but this size, and that you can put a windbreak on it like that. It will be a dream because this scale, it's unbelievable. I think that's why it got discontinued. I have no idea. I tried to call one time um, my weight, the people that make it. They went from the Gen Pro 250 to the Gen Pro 300, which is nothing like this. Um, and it's just incredible. Um, look how fast this thing reads. I'm going to show you guys right now. And I've had it there for a little bit. Look how fast it just go. It doesn't climb up. It gives you the, it gives you the weight. Boom. Right there. Okay. I mean, I've had it for a little bit on. So, if you want to calibrate it, these things are super easy to calibrate. Let's just go here real quick. You hit, um, just tear it first. You go to scale. It'll start asking for the 20 gram weight. Boom, right there. So from there, we go to change the units. Yeah, we're in grams again. I mean grains. So let's just pick up one bullet here. 125.10. Yeah, it had said 125.15 first, but I've only had this thing on for like maybe half hour, 40 minutes now. This is another skill that you got to let it warm up and you can also leave it on forever. No issues with it. It's supposed to be like a jewelry uh, scale and those people don't turn them off. So we got 125.10. Let's see if the F and D doesn't decide to drift on me now that I got the phone so close. There you go. The same thing as the Gem Pro. 125.10. But you guys see how, how it walks up and the Gem Pro gives you the measurement right on the spot. This one, I mean, it flies up to give you the measurement. Watch. It goes to zero. I'm going to put it on again. Look how fast it walks up and it gives you the measurements. Okay, 125.10. Let's go over to the Gem Pro. Look how fast this thing reads it. I'll take a little bit. Hold on, let's take it off. See? You're com I'm comparing the Gem Pro 250 against the A&D. It's supposed to be a more accurate 
scale, a lab, a lab balance to this one, 125.10, away in this bullet, See, that was instantaneous. 125.10, we're gonna go here to the A and D. The same. They both have the same accuracy. And I've been low, I've been doing, like weighing out my bullet tips here, and it's been the same scenario. See how this thing is rock solid? Now I can leave the door open, because I don't have no, I'm by myself here at home, I just like, you know, turned off completely the AC off, and it's just solid. It doesn't drift. It wasn't doing that when I first set it up. It would like move around two digits, come back down, up, and it was driving me nuts. And I guess it's just a matter of letting it settle the in, you know, like let the scale settle and uh, get acclimated. But now I'm weighing like this, guys. I don't want to make this too long. I'm going in 11 minutes. The first video was 37, but I gave up a lot of information. Hopefully, it'll get views and you guys can watch it if you're into reloading. Because for the most part, if you're not into this, you're not going to even stay with it five minutes. But anyways, um, I just wanted to show you guys this. You know, the accuracy of this uh, balance is still... You can see the bullets on there on the plate. It hasn't even moved. It's just solid. 125.10, the weight of the bullet. That's the Arab Match King. And I got the Gem Pro right next to it. To me, guys, I would have just stayed with the Gem Pro 250. But, you know, I don't regret buying this because, again, it, it, how things are with the shortage and supply and demand that we're going through now in 2022. Uh, if I, you know, if I, I would have never bought the bullet, a bit into the, you know, deal of, of getting it. Um, let me close this real quick. The, uh, you know, got, you know, this scale could have probably, when I would have decided to buy it, it would have probably ended up being more money. And, you know, for $550, $100 for the wings, uh, screen. Again, into it, into it, like $550, $105 plus the, on the windscreen, it was the tax plus the shipping. I'm into like $700. So if I would have said, oh, I'll just stick with my Gem Pro 250 for now, you know, it hasn't given me no issues, doesn't walk on me. I've had this scale for like, I, I could probably say like eight years or more. I can't remember going back to my channel and seeing when I first started making videos with the scale, but for sure it's pretty close to 10 years and I have not had any issues with it. Um, Yeah, point, you know, it'll drift a little bit. You just, you know, tear it out. But for the most part, it's right on point. And um, and no problems with it. So, again, I could have just stayed with the Gem Pro 250. But by the time I would have probably decided to go buy this one, it would have been maybe more money and not gotten the deal that I got between the balance and the wind break and all that. So, I just decided to get it now. I have it. I have them both. I can work with both of them and be as accurate as I can. All right, guys. So, I'll catch you guys later. This is Mr. Surplus Not Out.